Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thanks for joining us for another fantastic, classic Western film. Thunder Over Texas starring Big Boy Williams. Brought to you here free online by westernsontheweb.com. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this wonderful classic entertainment. And we'll see you after the movie. Bobby. Well, Sheriff, bad news? For once you're on the job. On the job is right. Sheriff, the driver's dead. Got it on purpose, probably. Knew I was after him. Yeah. Well, I'll be. Let me take him. Boy, nothing. It's a girl. Well, hello there. I'll give her to Jinx. Jinx? Jinx is old lady will take care of her if she's sober. Hey, where are you going? I'm gonna take her to my place. Nothing doing. She goes to Jinx. They'll have the inquest on his nibs. Oh, let him keep the kid, Sheriff. My wife, she's kind of sick again. Drunk, you mean? <laughs> you hear what he said? <laughs> well, all right. You take her. But have her at the inquest. Much obliged, Sheriff. I'll have her there.
feel better now? Yes, sir. Much better, thank you. That's good. What's your name? My name's Betty Norton. Hi, Betty. They call me Tiny, because I'm so little for my age. Who do you mean by they? The rest of the children are for boarding school. You see, mister. Say, what's your name? Me? I'm Ted Wright. Then I'll call you Ted. I always call my daddy Frank. Makes him laugh. Where's my daddy? Uh, your daddy's gone away on business. Uh, Tiny, what was? I mean, what is your daddy's business? My daddy's a civil engineer. He works for the railroad. He took me along today because I always bring him good luck. You might call it luck at that. But you told my husband yesterday it'll be $500. Today you offer me only $200. Well, that was yesterday. Today it's $200 or nothing. Come, speak up. It's nothing, Bruce Laird. We've slaved for years to keep our homestead. I guess we can still hold out a few more months until the railroad gets here. What's that about the railroad? <laughs> Just something to keep you guessing, you cheater. Yesterday it was fifty dollars, today it is fifty dollars. Twenty-five dollars. That's fifty dollars in your country. Just stop a minute. But he promised me fifty dollars. Laird, you better give him the fifty dollars in cash. I'll take it and get. Hello, Gonzalez. You might need that. Now get out of town. Gracias, senor. Laird, your chisel's going to get you into a heap of trouble someday. Well, never mind that. Let me take that briefcase. Yes, here they are. Here's a map to the spur of the new railroad. Here's a list of the water holes. You know, that Ted Wright's in luck. The spur runs right in front of his door. And they'll buy the water from him for their engines. Ted Wright's luck? You mean my luck? I'll take care of these papers, Sheriff. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we found Norton's kid in the car. Dead? No, very much alive. She was in the rumble seat when the car turned over. Where is she now? Why, Ted Wright's taking care of her after the inquest. Well, of all the blockheads, you're the worst. Why did you let Wright take the kid? Well, tomorrow at the inquest, we will take care of that. All right. Now let's have that Baron Munchausen stuff. Sure, see, I just written some down here. See, you, you do Charlie, will you, and I'll do the Baron, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there I was standing in the middle of 75 million cattle stampede. How many did you say, Baron? Well, anyhow, 50 million. Now, now, Baron, let's not prevaricate. Huh, prevaricate? Who's the kid? Say, Charlie, is, is your tonsils backfiring again? <laughs> I mean, let's take the bags. Well, all right. There was 25 billion cattle, and there I was... Uh, uh, How many? Come on now, Baron. All right. There was 10 million, and they were stampeding all over the place. Cannons to the right of them, cannons to the left of them, and cannons. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, Baron. Well, make it uh, 5,000. <laughs> Baron, I doubt your veracity. Was you there, Charlie? Hey, Tom! Nick! It's a boss! Hey, he's back early! Oh, oh we'll catch it now! Open again, huh? The minute my back's turned, you guys go radio on me. Tiny, this is my three radio nuts. 
Tom, Dick, and Harry. Hi, Hi Miss. Boys, this is our new pal, Tiny. All right, come on, get it over with. And it better be good. If it's not Tiny, I'll throw you off the ranch. Look, boss, what I made. Well, what's that? That's a new microfoam. Looks to me like an oil can. Well, here, you hold this. I, I got something uh, all framed. I think you're going to like this. Yes, I guess yeah. so. Bong, bong, bong. This is the unnatural broadcasting company. Radio XYZ, the bottom of the dial, owned and operated by Tom, Dick, and Harry. We broadcast on a hot carrier frequency of 1,500 bicycles on a permanent wavelength of 500 so watts. Hello, everybody. When the moon comes over the mountain. And it's the wrong theme song. All right. Uh, we now transfer control to the Windy City, where we will drop into the stale air taxicab office. Seamus and Sandy are sitting at their desk in the taxicab office. Here they are. Well, Sandy, you all going over to see Madam Queen tonight, ain't you? No, Seamus, I ain't going over to see Madam Queen because they ain't feeling quite up to sniff. What's the matter, Sandy? Oh, uh, I done had the insomnia last night. Insomnia? What's that, Sandy? Don't you know what the insomnia am, Seamus? That's when a fella can't sleep. You don't mean insomnia. You mean the pneumonia. I guess I know what I mean, Seamus. Why couldn't you sleep, Sandy? On account of that window shade being up all night. Why didn't you pull it down, Sandy? Because I couldn't reach across the street, Seamus. <laughs> you nasty man. <laughs> Don't never do that. Oh, I'll... That's awful. Well, Tiny, what do you think of my three boys? I think they're funny, especially that one. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, he's funny. He's too funny for words. Now, you're running the house, hon. I've got something to say to these gentlemen. Call yourselves my pals, do you? A fine bunch of pals you are. Listen to the radio instead of working. I get this. Tonight, that radio goes back to town. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 and in the meantime, I want you to behave yourself. Because that kid's a lady. I don't want her to get the wrong impression. Sure. Now, get out of here and get to work. Give me that. Get out of here. Oh, uh, oh, you want it. Boom. Boom. Look out there, Tiny. What are you doing to that gun? Boom. Boom. Come on now, give me that gun. Let's make a trade. All right, what do you trade the gun for? A kiss. A kiss? <laughs> All right, one kiss, one gun. No, sir, this is a good gun. It's cheap for three kisses. No, four. Four kisses get the gun. All right, that's a bargain. Four kisses for the gun. Come here, you little monkey. What do you mean by trying to scare me out of my boots? Well, here's the payoff. <laughs> Look here, don't you know that if you monkey around with a big gun, it's liable to throw you? You little so-and-so. You leave these guns alone around here. That's the break. For once, we can go to the dance and enjoy ourselves without the boss butting in on our imitations. You said it. Ted Wright hasn't cracked a smile from once. Yeah, I bet he's forgot how to laugh. You know, I'll knock him over tonight when I imitate Rudy Ballet. Ah. bump, diddy bump, diddy bump, 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 bump. Ah! Hey, you know, I'm going to kill him when I do my Baron Munchhouse imitation. If they don't kill you. Yeah. Uh, hey, Charlie, do you remember when I uh, was in Paris, Pencil Pucky, when I met uh, Queen Isabella? You remember, huh? Well, uh, Izzy says to me, she says, uh, you know that we got to discover America, so when you send the wireless to... Uh... You know who this is? I want to be alone. I think I go home. <laughs> Come in. That's great, Tiny, that's great. Well, fancy those swell saddle blankets you guys are diked up in. The chapeaus, the chapeau. Take your hats off. Well, boss, we're on our way. Thought we'd drop in and 
say good night to the kids. Oh, that's very nice of you, Tom. But you stay here tonight and mind Tiny. I'm going to town with Dick and Harry. Oh, gee, boss. I promised that new school mom I'd show her some of my latest invitations. Never mind the school teacher. Beat it, cowboys, and saddle up. Oh, boss, please can I go to town with you? Sure. Some other time. Honey, I'm going to town. Will you promise to be a good girl while I'm away? Promise? But first, Tom will have to make funny faces at you. You hear that, Tom? She wants you to make funny faces at her. Here's the one you got. I suppose she don't laugh and draws the gun. Just try me and see. Bye, honey. You don't know it, cowboy, but you're in for one of the biggest surprises of your long and sinful life. Sleep tight. Let's start now. All right. Hi-ho, everybody. This is Rudy Belly speaking. But I have your fifty dollars. I stay until it is spent. Come on, get out of here. We didn't tell you, Mr. Lad. Get it out of here, Savvy. Oh, fool, Mr. Lad, to play me with all that damn that way. He's a bad hombre. See you a little later, Miss Mason. Well, and do you call it a good evening when you frighten away my escort? And just when he was paying me a compliment. What was he saying? He was telling me I had the brightest eyes this side of El Paso. Well, he was telling you the truth. And he's such a nice dancer. <laughs> Don't he like your invitation? They sneak in without buying tickets, so out they go. Oh, now, Mr. Laird, I'll pay for their tickets. It's too late now. Out they go. Don't push me too far. I might get mad. Now, come on in, Bear, and have a good time. And be careful. Huh? But you dare shot him that time, huh? <laughs> hey, that, that blonde over there, that's what I got for Well, you've been in town a week, and you haven't visited me at the bank. I didn't know that you were a member of the school board, too. Well, I'm not. But I'm very much interested in you, just the same. Miss Mason? Helen, why waste your time on Wright? He's shiftless and deep in debt. Why not interest yourself in someone more substantial? Me, for instance. I can give you everything you want. Don't I practically own three pines, lock, stock, and barrel? Come, Helen, be sensible. Well, what do you want, cowboy? Nothing. On your way. On your way. Mr. Laird, remember what I told you a few minutes ago? Well, I'm just about at that stage right now. Don't get too hasty, cowboy. Hey, who are you to lay down the law to me? You think you can scare me as you did the Jones boy? Besides, Helen would rather talk to me any day than you. This is no kind of a dance for you, honey. I told you that. But I had no place to go this evening, and my room was so lonesome. Oh, I ain't got much to offer you, but why don't you come over to my place? There's my wife, I mean. I ain't got much, but, but what I have is yours. And besides, Tiny needs a lady around the place. Who is Tiny? A little girl. The cutest kid you ever saw. We found her this morning. I'd love to see her. Would you? Yeah. All right. Yes, I'm afraid we're not. Oh. 
we had a good time. Lovely. The dancing was so interesting, so much Fine. different than we have in the East. Gonzalez is still in town. See that he leaves. And while you're about it, you might as well duck this fellow right off. Give him something to remember tonight by. Understand? All right. We'll come again. Good night. Good night. Suggestion. Sure, all you want. Let's stop by my boarding house. They might be anxious about me. All right. Mr. Laird, let's talk about you. You better stand here a minute. All right, let him have it. You get right. You have saved my life tonight, amigo. Gonzalez shall not forget. These places are getting pretty hot for you, Umbre. If you know what's good for you, you better hit for the border. But I have a score to settle first. Then I leave. But I have no horse. Are you hurt? Oh, no. Everything's all right. Come to the ranch in the morning and I'll fix you up. Gracias, senor. Same to you. Many of them. Perhaps we'd better be going. Perhaps we had. Is everybody happy? This is Ted Lewis, your old musical master. Please do that last one over again. You know, Ted Lewis playing his saxophone. Ted Lewis? It's midnight. If the boss come home and caught you up, he'd skin me alive. I guess you're right. But first we must say our prayers. We? What do you mean, we? Just what I said. First we must pray. You and me. Pray? I can't pray. I never learned. Then I'll teach. Kneel down. Now what do I do? Repeat after me. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Huh? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. I don't know what she thinks of you. Well, she don't think I'm as funny as they are. <laughs> and please, God, Bring back my daddy. And please, God, bring back my, I mean, her daddy. And please, God, make Tom a better actor. Amen. She's right, God. Please make me a better actor. A much better actor. Then he ran out of the bank, jumped in the car, and raced for the pass. Any questions, gentlemen, before you render your verdict? No, Your Honor. Very well, gentlemen. You may render your verdict. 
But how about the gun? If this son priest robbed the bank, where's the gun? Silence, this is a court of justice. But we got a right to know what become of the gun if there ever was a gun. Why, the bank wasn't even held up if you asked me. Uh, nobody's asking you. Sit down. <laughs> You're the bailiff? Why don't you kick that fellow out? You're the fellow. Oh, I gotta go to the right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Order. Well, gentlemen, you may now render your verdict. We find that Frank Norton was accidentally killed while attempting to escape from justice. This coroner's court, having no further business, is now adjourned. What about the Norton kid, Judge? Being forgot about that kid. Hey, everyone will sit down again, please. As Justice of the Peace of this township, it is my duty to appoint a guardian for one Betty Norton, an orphan girl, until her relatives are notified. This uh, court is now ready to entertain motion. Your Honor, as Sheriff, I deem it my sworn duty to place this child in an orphan asylum as provided by law. An orphan asylum? Why, the very idea. There are folks here in Three Pines who would gladly provide this child with a home until her relatives are found. Your Honor, I object. If Miss Mason has any valid objections to placing this bank robber's brat in an asylum where she belongs, let her first qualify as a witness. Just a minute, just a minute. Uh, Mrs. Johnson. Yes, Your Honor. And you, Mrs. Quinn. Yes, Your Honor. You are both mothers of girls. Will you assist the court in arriving at a decision? We will, Your Honor. Forward, please. Miss uh, Mason, do you desire to testify? No, thank you. Is there anyone here who can sustain a valid objection to placing this orphan child in an asylum? If not, it is the judgment of this court that said Betty Norton shall be taken by the sheriff to the nearest orphanage and there kept until her relatives are notified. Judge Blake. Your Honor, and you ladies, Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Quinn? We object. This is highly irregular. Continue, Mr. Wright. Don't send Patty to the orphanage. She's a little lady, and she's got breeding. She needs tender care and loving hands to dress her in the morning. And can you dress her in the morning? Well, I can try. I put her to bed last night and dressed her this morning. Oh, Judge, don't send her to the asylum. Why, sometimes she won't even get enough to eat. How do you know that, Mr. Wright? Well, lady, I was raised there myself, and I know that they'll put her in a dark cellar and beat her sometimes. I don't believe a word you're saying. Well, I'll show you. <coughs> Mr. Wright. Well, excuse me, Judge. Maybe, but, you know, you may have been a bad boy. Well, maybe I was, but not that bad. The woman that runs that asylum rules by fear, not love. And Tiny needs love. And who'll help her say her prayers? And what do you know about prayers, Mr. Wright? Not much. But I can learn. Tiny can teach me. And besides, who will see that she wears the right clothes? The woman that runs that outfit? Not her. And why not? Because I know that she robs the kids of their grub and banks the money. That's false. I've known that matron for years, and she's honest. Hmm. Depends upon what he calls honest. If Wright gets that kid and locates her relatives, they may start asking questions. Oh, you're right. Please, Judge. Please, Mrs. Johnson. And please, Mrs. Quinn. Let me keep Tiny until her relatives are located. Please, just let me keep her temporary like. I promise, yes, I promise you on my mother's name that I'll take good care of her as long as she's in my charge. Well, very good, Mr. Wright. But uh, as you say yourself, the child will need care. I might say a woman's care. Now, how are you going to provide that? You're a bachelor, you know. I may be flying in the face of convention, but I'll board at Mr. Wright's house and look after Tiny. Very good. On condition that Miss Helen Mason, our school teacher, shall reside at Sky High Ranch. 
the temporary charge of and custody of one Betty Norton, a minor, is now awarded to Mr. Ted Wright. Thanks, Judge. Court's adjourned. <laughs> We've got to get control of that kid. You heard Brake's ruling, didn't you? Anything you do from now on will have to be done undercover, or you will be in jail for contempt of court. The judge isn't standing for any monkey shines. Oh, you may be afraid of that Jack Lake judge, but I'm not. Meet me at the bank in an hour, and we'll discuss our next move. <coughs> now we go back to our house. Oh, goody. <coughs> well, in my opinion, neither right to that school mom or the proper people to take care of that child. And I'm going to do the best I can to prevent them from having her. You leave Miss Mason's name out of this, Collier. Well, wasn't she a house at midnight? Wasn't she? I'll get you for this. Don't let anything but fear stop you. Understand? Come on, sir. Huh? I'll take care of this. I'm sorry, Ted. Oh, that's all right. Oh, okay. So, that's where my money's been going, eh? <clears throat> Clothes, I suppose, for that bank robber's kid. Oh, have a heart, Mr. Laird. She ain't got only the clothes we found her in. If you don't mind, let's talk it over over there. Well, that's no concern of mine. The asylum's the place for that kid. I'll get this right. The money for the mortgage on your place is due tomorrow. And I want every penny of it, do you understand? Yeah, but you told me when I borrowed the money that you'd extend the note six months if I ran short. Well, I know you've been short, and I'm going to be a little easy with you. I'll give you $2,000 for your property over the mortgage. Let's go over to the bank, and I'll deposit the money to your account. Sorry, Mr. Laird, but I can't sell the ranch now. I gotta have a home for the kid. How are you going to get the money for the mortgage? Don't worry about that. I've got some cattle ready for market. But cattle are cheap now. So are hogs. Radio. Listen, you fellas. Round up the steers in the south pasture. We're shipping in the morning. Okay, boy. Whose horse is that? Now, uh, that's Miss Mason. Oh. All right, get going. Okay. She ain't that tough break, right, Dick. You gotta round up them cattle. Well, I had just as the baron was coming on, too. You know, I, I, I want to see whether the Baron is as good as I am or whether I'm better. That's what I want to find out. Uh, you're better in some things than he is. I'm not sure. But, you know, you can't find out. Here, I, I got some new stuff there. Well, hello. I guess that's your horse outside. I know. Now we'll put a truck here. I guess I'm talking here. myself around here. Another ribbon there. Don't you think that'd be cute? I'll get it. Yeah. Hello. Oh. So you do like me, don't you? Of course, you big goose. <laughs> well, how long has this been going on? For a long time, darling. Two or three hundred years. Oh, I, I really think Ted's been a little too blind to notice it. Yeah, but I can sure notice it now. Helen, will you marry me? Well, how about my school? I don't know, but Tiny's got to have somebody to look after. She'll keep you busy. Won't you, Tiny? I sure will. I'm the best friend you've got in this town. I know that. Wright is shipping early tomorrow morning. That means he will start rounding up this afternoon. Collier, I don't want those steers to reach the valley. I'll do my best. Your best? 
you know what's good for you, you'll stampede Wright's herd from here into the next county. And while you're in the neighborhood, Got it? Right. And now moves. Hi, Jake. Hiya, Ted. I'm shipping at five in the morning. Got any cattle cars down in the valley? All you need? Fine. Then spot ten of them for me, will you? Sure, you bet. Need any help? No, Liz here's got to rest every five miles or so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's been a heap of traffic on this road today. Yeah, what do you mean? Why, the sheriff just went by like the devil himself was after him. He did? Yeah. Well, which way did he go? Well, that way. They're headed that way. Judge Blake, he'll know what to do. All right. Hurry as fast as you can, will you?
What's the matter? They stole them tiny. Who? The sheriff and two men. What? You stay here and I'll go and round up some of the boys. Boys? Boys? Hey, you are. Take these horses to the rear. They just rode out of town. Blake? Yes, Blake and Miss Mason. All right. Two four five A, please. That's your Hodges? Take some in and meet me at Moonshine Cabin. All right. good now. When you hear the chimes, it'll be exactly four o'clock. Boom. This is station T O M signing off. Our Father who art in heaven, God be thy name. Good afternoon, amigos. Stick them up. Talk fast, Greaser. Who's behind this stampede? Amigos. Gonzalez is finished. But before he die, he tell you a secret. Yeah? Larry, these men of much money is behind this. The child. Two has been taken. What child? You mean Wright's new kid? Who else? The child has been taken to... Quick, quick, Gonzalez. Where's Lard taking her? To Mo Moonshine. Cab. Moonshine Cab. Let's go. Tom, he's, he's dead. We know where they took Tiny, the Moonshine Cabin. Oh, 
What are you two fellows waiting on? Let's go. You fellows wait here for Blake and Helen. I'll go look things over. Okay, boss. I'll put you back in that bag. No, Laird. Oh, what's eating you, Collier? He'll be along soon. No, he better be. Watch the kid. I'm going up on the roof and look for Laird. Okay. What's wrong? has gone up to camp and he told us to wait right here. Never mind. There goes Laird down the road. Come on, Harry, let's go. How are you? Get out of our way. Next time. 
What's this I hear about somebody wanting to be sheriff? Well, the judge here wants to be elected sheriff after Collier's term's expired. Collier's term has expired. But the boys want you to be sheriff. Oh, not me, thanks. Let the judge have it. I'll have my hands full riding herd on Tiny and Helen here. <coughs> All right. And her on. The judge, this gives you the authority to catch him, try him, and bury him. And bury him, huh? <laughs> And as the band would say, they live happily ever after. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this classic Western film, this wonderful movie. We appreciate you being here, we appreciate you watching our films, and we hope you'll come on by westernsontheweb.com. Over 2,000 Western films to watch free, and they're brought to you by westernsontheweb.com. I'm Bob Terry, have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. <laughs>